Good morning. This is Michael Piantadosi, Director of Conservation at Native Plant Trust. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today during the first day of Trillium Week uh, about the family Melanthaceae, the um, bunch flower or Trillium family, as it were, in New England. I'm going to focus a little bit on this brief talk about the different genera within this family, including the genus Trillium. Um, talk a little bit about the uh, native plants that are in New England uh, in this family, as well as those that are uh, of conservation concern. So first of all, a few um, a little notes about this family. Um, the species in the Melanthaceae are perennial herbs. Um, usually they have leaves clustered at the base of the plant. Sometimes they have leaves that grow on the stem, such as in Camelirium or Veratrum. The plants usually arise from a group of horizontal roots below the soil surface, though some species may grow from bulbs or tubers. Um, species with stem leaves uh, have leaves arranged alternately, or they may be whorled. Uh, leaves have parallel or pinnately branched veins and have untoothed edges or margins. Uh, the flowers in this family are solitary, such as in trillium, or arranged in various inflorescences are actinomorphic, so radially symmetrical. Uh, they have both pollen-bearing and ovule-bearing parts. The tepals, or in other words, the uh, petals that look like they could be sepals, are arranged in two whorls of three, and the outer whorl, the sepals, may be green or colored like the inner whorl, like the petals. There are usually six stamens in one or three styles. The fruit is a berry or a, a capsule, a dry capsule. Species in this family were formerly considered to be part of the Liliaceae, um, which is now broken off. So the first uh, of the species I'd like to talk about in this family are Anticlea elegans, the mountain death camas, which has um, a really intense name to it uh, because it is toxic when consumed. Um, the mountain death camas is, is very rare in New England, uh, only known from shores of Lake Champlain in Vermont, uh, where it grows on lakeshore headlands and bluffs on high pH or calcareous bedrock. Uh, as I said, it is poisonous to humans and cattle and a common source of poisoning in sheep. Um, not necessarily New England, but it is, it is um, documented before. And the flowers have a, a foul-smelling, unpleasant odor. They're somewhat well known for this. Second species is Camelarium luteum. Uh, this is devil's bit, um, which has the northeastern extreme of its distribution and its range in New England, just entering western Massachusetts and western Connecticut. Um, it's unusual in that it has carpellate and staminate plants um, that are both very different ecologically and morphologically. That is that the male and female plants typically um, grow differently or grow in slightly different uh, locations. Um, usually the staminate plants uh, or the male plants are more abundant. And some more photos of the really um, floriferous flowers, if you will. Uh, Veratrum viridae or American false hellebore. Um, this is uh, a pretty common site around New England, not a rare plant, um, and with the kind of characteristic uh, linear uh, venation pattern that you might see in, in lilies or alliums or things like that. Um, but anyway, American false hellebore, um, composed of eastern North American populations that are widely separated from western North American populations. If you look on a North American map, there's a distinct gap between the eastern and westernmost um, populations of this species. It's uh, hypothesized that continental glaciation produced that kind of distribution. Um, this plant was considered to have magical properties by many Native American tribes who used it for talismanic and ceremonial purposes, as well as to treat conditions ranging from hair loss to, to madness and insanity. Uh, however, the plant was widely considered to be poisonous if eaten. You'll often find this uh, growing in thickets with, with skunk cabbage, with simple carpus fetidus, uh, and other plants in kind of wet um, you know, floodplain forest type areas. And here are the close-up of the, of the flowers of American false hellebore, which are, are really numerous and um, quite impressive. You can see here the, the green color of its tepals and, and petals. Um, okay, let's go into Trillium now. I, I'm not going to talk about every species in the genus. Uh, I think you're going to get enough of that this week during Trillium week, but I do want to mention a few that are native, um, either common or of conservation concern in the New England region. First one is Trillium cernuum, or uh, wait, you know, nodding wake robin. Many people are familiar with this one, as well as with Erectum and a few of the other ones that you, you might see somewhat more commonly um, in certain locales in New England. Um, this is a, a white flowered trillium um, called nodding trillium because the flowers nod or hang downwards, as you can see in the top left photo, and they're often concealed by the leaves, the whorl of uh, three leaves. 
And on the right here, you can see the, the dry berry, the capsule-like fruit that um, is produced at the end of the season. Um, in the bottom left here, I have a, a quick summary of um, its ranks across New England. It is fairly widespread um, in Massachusetts and S4S5. Um, considered of concern in Rhode Island, um, probably because of a lack of some of its habitat areas, and then uncommon in S3 in, in Vermont um, for much the same reason. Trillium erectum, the red wake robin, um, more common of the trillium that you might see across the region. Um, it's, the, it's the common trillium in moist, deciduous, and sometimes mixed forests throughout New England. Um, with kind of fetid smelling flowers that attract carrion flies, leading to an obvious uh, explanation of its, of its carrion color, this kind of red flesh color you're seeing. Um, and while it is called the red wake robin, it, it does sometimes exhibit uh, white, yellow, green, or paler red flowers. And on the right is the, the capsule-like fruit that it, it produces. Here it is in its full glory. This is one I think of seeing, um, especially on edges of really rich forests, um, particularly through Vermont and New Hampshire, um, in, in great numbers. You can see unranked in Maine, um, widespread in Massachusetts, and yet extremely rare in Rhode Island. It's a state rarity there. Trillium grandiflorum, or the white trillium. Um, it's, this is the largest flower trillium in New England, um, where it's native to parts of Western New England and persisting or spreading from cultivation elsewhere, uh, which is kind of why it has both the blue and green county level maps uh, on GoBot. Uh, it has an exceptionally long lived flower remaining open and fertile for two to three weeks. Uh, you can see here the, gra the ground cup carpeted with it, and I think one trillium erectum right in the middle of that photo. Um, so the, the persistence of the flowers has been shown to increase the probability of vegetation by large long-tongued bees that are most effective pollinators of this species. Um, and the roots of white rake robin were used for medicinal purposes by several Native American tribes. Um, sometimes you see stripes or markings on the petals, um, which are sometimes thought to be attributed to infection with mycoplasma or different parasitic bacteria that have infected. So here's that map I was talking about on the left. Uh, where you can see it is introduced in some spots, um, likely coming from cultivation um, in, in certain parts of New England. Trillium undulatum, or painted trillium, uh, the last of the plants I'm gonna talk about in this quick little wrap up of the Melanthaceae. Um, painted trillium, or um, painted wake robin, uh, found through most deciduous, sometimes mixed forests on acidic soils and in deep shade. Um, the petals are white with a distinctive red purple crescent shaped mark near the base and the leaves have a short petiole, um, as you can see from here. Um, occasionally unusual forms are attributed to the same kind of infection that you might see in grandiflorum, uh, also from parasitic bacteria. Uh, you can see in this image the uh, fleshy berry-like fruit that it produces um, and the conservation ranks. Unranked in Maine, fairly widespread in S4 in Massachusetts. Rare enough concern in Rhode Island, um, again, because of the somewhat the thinning of certain moist, deciduous, and mixed forests um, that you might find in that state. Um, hope this quickly kind of summarizes some of the interesting uh, biodiversity in, in the flora within the Melanthaceae. Um, for more on, on this family and on Trillium in general, please join us throughout this week uh, as we honor the legacy of Will Curtis and the Trillium. Um, as it relates to the Garden in the Woods and uh, Native Plant Trust. Hope this gives you some kind of a primer on the conservation uh, of different species within this family. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks so much for tuning in and take care.